A Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for 2025 honors three researchers, Mary E. Brankow, Fred Ramsdell, and Simon Sagaguchi for their revolutionary discoveries concerning peripheral immune tolerance. This video is a humble attempt to explain their groundbreaking discovery. First, let's begin with Simon Sagaguchi's work, The Discovery of Regulatory T-Cells or TREC. For understanding this, we must know how T-helper cells works and what do you mean by central tolerance in immunology. Let's begin with how T-cells works. So this is an infected cell. It engulfs the virus by phagocytosis and degrades it and a particular a fragment is presented on MHC receptor or HLA protein complex to the outside. So this is a particle of the virus that is displayed to the outside. So this is recognized by T helper cells or T cells. T cells as you see there are different receptors for T cells or each T cell with is with unique specificity that can bind to specific antigenic particles. Of the pathogen. So when a T cell receptor attaches to this virus fragment, this T cell is activated and alerts the immune system and triggers a coordinated specific immune response against it, this pathogen by means of all other immune cells like B cells, macrophages, etc., and finally eliminating the pathogen from the system. So T cells is actually regulating this specific immune response. Now the second concept that is central tolerance. Central tolerance is a process where T cells that recognize the body's own proteins were eliminated while maturing in the thymus. Let me make it more clear. As we know, T cells are also produced in bone marrow, but maturation takes place in thymus. During this maturation, each T cell has a unique shaped T cell receptor on its surface. Then thymus cell holds out body sown proteins on a receptor to this T cell. If the T cell recognize body sown or self proteins, that particular T cell is destroyed or eliminated. This actually prevents overreaction or autoimmune response or response against self proteins or self cells. So this T cell has to pass this test in order to become fully active. So T cells that pass this test go out into the body to look for intruders or pathogens. So this central tolerance is very crucial in avoiding overreaction or autoimmune response or identification of self proteins or self cells by T cells. Now let us understand Sakaguchi's work. His hypothesis was that immune system must employ some form of security guard capable of coming down other T cells that had slipped through the initial tolerance test in the thymus. Let us understand his hypothesis from his experiment. His experiment was he removed the thymus from three day old mice. So this mice developed autoimmune disease. As we know, thymus is a site of maturation of T cells. Immune system will be overactive as these T cells don't have that central tolerance or that test that eliminate T cells that activate or that interact with self cells or self proteins. So immature T cells attack self cells. That's why this mouse becomes sick. Then he isolated mature T cells from a genetically identical mice and injected that T cells into the deceased mice and found out that the mice is healthy or this injected T cells protected the mice from autoimmune reaction or autoimmune disease. These T cells that is injected calm down or check the attack by immature T cells that is already present in this mice that is capable of attacking self cells. So he concluded that there must be a protective cell type, a security guard that keeps other T cells in check or T cells that escape this test of central tolerance. This is followed by a second experiment that discovered regulatory T cells. As we know, T helper cells has CD4 plus protein on its surface. So this is a typical feature of T helper cells. He found out another class of T cells, which is which has this CD4 plus protein. Along with that, there is CD25 plus protein on its surface. Then he conducted the same experiment. A mice whose thymus is removed, he injected T cells only with CD4 plus only, 
or T helper cells with only CD4 plus protein on its surface and found out that mice remained sick. Then he continued the experiment along with T cells with CD4 plus protein. He added T cells with both the receptors CD4 plus and CD25 plus protein on the surface and found out that then these cells actually protected the mice from developing autoimmune response. He identified a new class of T cells. These cells help suppress or calm the immune response. They express both CD4 plus and CD25 surface proteins and he named them as regulatory T cells or TRECs. So Sagaguchi identified a new class of T cells which is called as regulatory T cells. Now the second part of the experiment carried out by Mary, Mary Brankow and Fred Ramstel, discovery of FOXP3 gene. Mary Brankow and Fred Ramstel became interested in a peculiar mouse strain called scurvy mouse, which originated in the US laboratory in the 1940s. These are the features of this mouse. This male scurvy mice showed fatal autoimmune-like symptoms. Symptoms included scaly skin, enlarged organs, and early death. And thereon, T cells attacked body tissues. So it's an autoimmune response. The mutation responsible was located on the X chromosome. So they wanted to find out the mutant gene that is responsible for this curvy condition. And they first they carried out the localization. They focused on X chromosome. It was known that this mutant gene is located on the X chromosome. So genetic mapping were conducted and narrowed down the location of the scurvy mutation to an area of 500,000 base pairs nucleotides and followed by detailed mapping an intensive process of mapping this large area of DNA in detail. It is a Herculean task with molecular tools available in 1990s. Then gene comparison after identifying 20 potential genes in that region. They systematically compared these genes between healthy mice and scurvy mice. And finally, they found out the mutation in the 20th and final gene they examined and they called it as FOXP3 gene. The faulty gene was previously unknown, but it had similarities to a group of genes called Fokker box or Fox genes, which regulate the activity of other genes. So they named this new gene as FOXP3 gene. Then this was the second hypothesis, the human connection of this gene. Ipex disease in humans, their hypothesis was it's a human variant of scurvy disease. So they suspected Apex might be the human counterpart of scurvy disease. Working with pediatricians globally, they collected samples from boys affected with Apex disease and confirmed that harmful mutations existed in the human equivalent gene FOXP3. So mutations were found in the human FOXP3 gene. In 2001, they confirmed FOXP3 mutations cause both apex and scurvy mouse disease. After this discovery, Saiguchi and others convincingly proved that FOXP3 gene controls the development of regulatory T cells. So this gene is responsible for the development of T regulatory cells. So this was the experiment. So how this regulatory T cells protects us? Suppose a T cell that has slipped through the test in thymus, so they can interact with bodysone proteins that is presented on the cell surface. So endogenous protein that is presented on HLA receptor, so these, these T cells can interact as it has slipped through the test. So this leads to autoimmune reaction. Then there will be an intervention by this patrolling regulatory T cells. These T cells discover that the attack is a mistake and calm it down, thus preventing autoimmune disease. So this is the role of T regulatory cells, calming down T cells that slip through dust in the thymus so that it can interact with self cells or self proteins. That interaction is calmed down by these T regulatory cells, thus preventing autoimmune diseases. The collective discoveries of Brankow, Ramstel and Sakaguchi explained peripheral tolerance. So this is a summary. They explained the mechanism for peripheral immune tolerance. Regulatory T cells or T-Rex maintain peripheral immune tolerance. Their development is controlled by the FOXP3 gene. Tracks act as a security guards preventing other T cells from attacking the body's own cells. 
The second role is it also helps in calming down the immune system after an invader or pathogen is eliminated from the system. So overreaction is avoided by means of T regulatory cells. So this is a summary of their work. Now let us see the clinical impact or significance. Why these findings fetch the Nobel Prize? First, it is widely used in the treatment of autoimmune disease. Researchers are attempting to promote the formation of more regulatory T cells using substances like interleukins 2 to stimulate T regulatory cell production. Another method is by isolating, expanding and returning T-Rex to patients to prevent autoimmune reactions. The goal is to prevent autoimmune reactions and also organ rejection post-transplant. So research is going on in this aspect and is based on T-regulatory cell. The second application is in cancer treatment. Tumors often attract large number of regulatory T cells which protect them from immune attack. Acts as a shield, scientists aim to break down this truck wall so that other immune cells can reach and destroy the tumor. So research is going on in this aspect also. Their works explained peripheral immune tolerance that is mediated by T regulatory cells. Hope you are benefited from this video. Take care, stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforay.com.